evening people. So I'm Pastor Leia and this is my friend Ginger Snap here. So welcome back <laughs> with a Ginger Snaps first getting in my face. So welcome back to our living room as we continue in our rather loosely themed uh, faith and fiction series this summer for our Bible study series. Uh, so thus far we've mostly been talking about uh, imagery and art. Uh, we started off with uh, dragons and unicorns in the Bible because translation is fun. Um, and then we talked about uh, bird imagery and art. Last week we talked about the legend of St. Wilgefortis, who is my very favorite saint. Uh, so this week, kind of continuing on a bit of a medieval kick, we're going to talk about the Holy Grail, which uh, sometimes features rabbits that will bite your fit. Ginger Snap, you're blocking my t-shirt. This is the t-shirt from Monty Python and the Holy Grail with the, the rabbit that... Whoops. It was just in reach and then Ginger Snap kicked it. The rabbit. That one. With the sharp pointy teeth. This, I don't own very many stuffed animals, but this one I got in New York City when I went to see Spamalot on Broadway. Anyway, because obviously the important thing about the myth of the Holy Grail is that it inspired the source material that ended up giving me one of my uh, favorite Tim Curry musicals. So there's that. Anyway, so... I wanted to begin by reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, uh, verses somewhere where the cat is not blocking me. Verse uh, 57. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. This is the word of the Lord. So naturally, uh, sometime after this uh, scene near the end of the Gospel of Matthew, where Joseph of, Marathe Joseph of Arimathea takes the body of Jesus and prepares it and lays it in his own tomb, <laughs> they're... <laughs> It's a bunch of fur on my lipstick, because that's something I need in my life. Obviously, after that uh, ad adventure, Joseph of Arimathea goes to England, uh, specifically roughly the area of Glastonbury and, and Somerset, so kind of a southern England, um, and uh, becomes a bishop and spreads the gospel there. Um, did this technically really happen? I mean, to be fair, we only have this coming up in written record around the 12th century. And if it takes 1,200 years for something to be written down as history, probably not. But this is a real, like, legend. It's actually, like, very... It, it, it's a big part of Arthurian legend. And, um, yeah, there, there are people who, who will tell you that, yes, one of uh, Jesus' immediate followers did come to England and spread the gospel there, which would be delightful if true. Um, if you haven't picked up on it yet, I'm a pretty hardcore Anglophile, so... Anyway, so, but point being, uh, this does lead us quite directly into Arthurian legend, um, much of which also starts to pop up around the 12th century, so there's kind of some overlap there. Uh, and of course, one of the uh, key themes of Arthurian legend is the search for the Holy Grail. So, uh, start off, what is a grail? Uh, we usually see a grail depicted as a cup such as this, it looks like a cup, it's actually a candle holder that uh, someone found for me at a Goodwill at some point. Um, so we usually see the grail depicted as a cup or chalice or goblet. Um, of course, if we're fans of Indiana Jones, obviously it's, it's wooden because, you know, Jesus was the son of a carpenter. Um, although, depending on who you ask in legend, it might be made out of um, agate or pure gold or like just covered in jewels or like total diamond, or it, it, it's, it's a stuff of obj um, the, the uh, object of legend, so it can be made out of anything really. Um, so anyway, we usually see it portrayed as a very fancy cup of some sort. Uh, the word grail uh, literally means a uh, cup or bowl, actually, um, because of course there was a point um, in certain areas of the world in history where you didn't drink out of what we would think of maybe as a, as a cup, you'd be drinking out of what we would think of as a bowl because maybe that would be easier to make. It's some kind of multi-purpose thing that you would eat or drink out of. Eh. Anyway, uh, so according to legend, this is what Jesus was drinking out of uh, the Last Supper. Could this, uh, obviously, that did exist at one point in history, in order for Jesus to have, you know, had wine, 
Uh, he probably wasn't drinking it out of his hand, so there was probably a cup or bowl of some sort that Jesus was drinking out of. Uh, does it still exist today, 2,000 years later? I mean, it could? Is there any particularly strong evidence to say that it does, or where it is, or how it came to be there? No, there's really not. You can go down all sorts of interesting rabbit holes of uh, people who have searched for it, which did actually include Hitler. That wasn't even Indiana Jones. That actually, that was actually a thing, because, you know, Hitler needed to be more strange. Anyway, um, so anyway, point me, uh, the, the cup that uh, Jesus drank out of at the Last Supper. So depending on uh, what you are reading, um, this might give you immortality if you drink out of it. Uh, such as in Indiana Jones. Um, it might uh, purge you of all of your sins. It might uh, only appear to you if you are perfectly pure of heart, which, sure. Um, anyway, I, I think it's, it's kind of as a, a point of mythology and the hero's legend that um, in the structure of epic mythology, there needs to be something that you are, like a physical object that you're looking for um, to aid you in your quest. Um, quite a lot of uh, fiction follows the structure of uh, the hero's journey. Um, lots of Shakespeare, uh, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. You can, if you've ever taken a high school English class, you've probably uh, structured some piece of fiction uh, as it follows the hero's journey. Um, so it, it's kind of uh, a storytelling device. And um, I would like to think that if uh, the voice of God were to appear from the clouds and uh, instruct a, a group of young men to do something, I would like to think it would be more along the lines of, I don't know, um, go right injustices in the world. Uh, go and preach the gospel of peace. Go and help people. Go and make sure that no one is hungry. Rather than, hey, go on a road trip to find a cup. But to be fair, it probably makes for a better literature in the, in the scheme of things rather than go and encourage people to be nice to each other. We, we always like the drama. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the Holy Grail is one of quite a number of holy objects that uh, may or may not have ever existed or may or may not still exist or existed in the Middle Ages specifically because the Middle Ages were, were all about this kind of thing. Uh, so depending on who you ask, um, various churches might have one or more of uh, the nails um, from the Holy Cross, which, I mean, sure, those probably existed at some point. Um, or maybe a piece of rope that bound Jesus to the cross. Uh, depending on which kind of artistic tradition you're following, it's nails or rope or maybe both. Also, as kind of a side note, and I'm honestly not entirely sure why this bothers me as much as it does, but um, the, the word in Greek um, that we usually have translated as hand, so uh, like, you know, the, the hand was pierced by a nail. Uh, when we think of a hand, we are thinking of this, right? But the word in Greek for hand includes what we think of as the wrist. So, um, hope I'm not grossing people out if you're about to bite into something, but if you were to put a nail through the palm of someone's hand, which is usually where uh, the crucifixion wounds are depicted in art, uh, the bones in your hands are kind of small and not the strongest bones in your body. And if you were being hung and like a large percentage of your body weight is being, it, your hand would shred apart. But if there were a nail through the bones in your wrist, then that would hold you up. So I don't know why it bothers me that uh, in art, the wound is usually in the palm of the hand because that couldn't happen, which I mean, that, that's not the point really. But uh, anyway, when throughout history, people have uh, claimed to have the stigmata or the wounds of Christ, um, then those tend to show up in the palms. And that isn't the point, but anyway, also fun fact, quite a number of uh, saints um, have had the wounds of Christ. So they've um, had mysteriously um, like 
gaping holes in their palms and then something on their side and maybe some scratches on their forehead. Anyway, that's the stigmata. Um, what, 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 what was that sidetrack from in the first place? Uh, holy nails. Yes, yes, holy nails. Uh, so there's, I believe, also a church that claims to have uh, some of the wood from uh, where the, the stable, where, where Jesus was laying as a baby, and all these things. I mean, sure, like, they, they, they existed. There was, you know, wood that Jesus came in contact with. Um, there was a wooden cross that Jesus was hung on. Uh, and so, so many churches have pieces of, of, of the Holy Cross because, sure, like, like a splinter of it. I, mean, I guess, why not? Um, th these things existed. Is it important to know exactly wh where they are now? I, I mean, I don't necessarily think so, but that's certainly not to say that they aren't around. Uh, so, you are really... The microphone never picks it up. She's purring very hardcore right now. She's quite interested in this, this topic, apparently. Uh, what if a rabbit with sharp, pointy teeth? Okay, cat has no fear. Not intimidated by the rabbit with sharp, pointy teeth. Uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is an excellent film if you haven't seen it recently. I think it was on Netflix last time that I checked, and everybody should see it. Anyway, it, it's really neither here nor there. Uh, it's, it's maybe not the, the most uh, biblically-based film in the, the existence of film. But again, to be fair, the myth of the Holy Grail doesn't really show up until the 12th century, so it's kind of all relative. Um, yeah. Meow yourself. Yeah. Meow. Okay then. Um, so yes, rabbits. So there are um, all, all sorts of stories that uh, feature the, the Holy Grail, and I think it's interesting that uh, the mythology of Jesus objects tend to be so focused on a cup that he drank out of rather than, I don't really know what, what I would think of like the single most holy Jesus object as being, I guess, maybe other than the cross. But then again, I guess, to be fair, it would be a lot easier to like go on a, a road trip to find a cup rather than to find a piece of wood. Maybe that would be anticlimactic or maybe it wouldn't, you know, survive a thousand years or whatever, because what, I, I don't know. I didn't write any of these stories. I was nowhere, nowhere near born. Uh, in the, the 12th century, weirdly enough, because I am not a vampire. Um, but I think it is interesting that um, these myths that have been so central to English literary identity are so wrapped up in the story of Jesus. And I think that is kind of neat that um, even when we're uh, telling uh, fantastic tales about knights slaying dragons and rescuing damsels in distress and uh, ladies in, in lakes with swords, and yes, obviously I own a sword, and yes, of course, I needed to pull it out for this video, as one does. Uh, even when we're, we're telling stories about uh, women in bodies of water uh, handing out weaponry as, you know, the basis of government, uh, that we're still in some way uh, telling the story of Jesus. And I do love that um, even though there's, you know, some problematic aspects of Arthurian legend, uh, to, to, to put it mildly, uh, at, its, at its essence, it is a story of brotherhood and uh, might making right and uh, trying to create a society of equality and justice and uh, faith and good ideals. So anyway, um, if uh, um, the story of the Holy Grail and its uh, accompanying legends inspire you in any way, then awesome. Uh, if you want to make it your life's work to find a 2,000-year-old cup, um, good luck with that. Yep, I, I hope that no rabbits try to bite your throat on your way there to find it. Um, and of course, if you uh, do a Google search, you can find all sorts of images of various chalices that have been, or uh, recreations of chalices that have been claimed to be the chalice throughout uh, the ages. Um, so yeah, Jesus stories, and uh, some could definitely say Jesus fan fiction. With, with, the Holy Grail and, and all of that definitely, I, I think, would fall into... No, no, this is not a cat toy. It, it's my toy. It's older than you. Got it when I was 18. Um, 
yeah, anyway, definitely, I would say, falls under the category of Jesus fan fiction. Um, but they are definitely interesting stories, and uh, certainly stories that have been sticking around for quite a while, and it's almost a thousand years at this point. Also, speaking of Glastonbury, so uh, there was a big, gorgeous abbey there that uh, Henry VIII had bulldozed as, well, I mean, not literally bulldozed, obviously, because of the century that it was, but, uh, you know, as, as you do, because he, uh, one of the reasons that he split with the Catholic Church was that it meant he could lay claim to all of the finances of churches in England, which obviously would have been enticing. Anyway, so there there was at one point a huge, huge, gorgeous um, abbey in Glastonbury, and uh, now there's just a few walls of it left. But if you go to Glastonbury, as I have done, you can see the graves of Arthur and Guinevere. Uh, so you might argue, obviously, they were real people because we know where they were buried. The uh, archaeologists have told us, I believe, that, that the graves are empty, but their graves are there. <laughs> Anyway, that's um, not particularly here or there either. Just a fun fact that technically one could say that I've seen the graves of Arthur and Guinevere. Anyway, uh, so that was uh, some fun um, side quest fan fiction related tangents of uh, the Bible and uh, its accompanying legends with uh, the Holy Grail. Uh, so Ginger Snap and I hope that uh, any women rising out of lakes are friendly and uh, offering you weaponry and not trying to attack you with weaponry. Uh, we also hope that any bunnies that you meet are of the friendly variety. Um, I often leave bits of salad out of my yard to try to make friends with the neighborhood bunny who comes through sometimes. Anyway, good night from Ginger Snap and me. And uh, we hope to see some of you tomorrow night for our Wednesday evening Bible st Wednesday evening uh, prayer. Uh, we are still having our Thursday afternoon Zoom cocktail hours uh, at five o'clock. Um, if you would like to join us for some casual chat, then uh, maybe uh, share your favorite Monty Python line. <laughs> there, there's so many of them. Um, anyway, uh, so we uh, wish you good night and happy hunting in the search for the Holy Grail.